Welcome to Emuna Trek. Tonight, I want to do something a little different, especially as you can see, my background is a little different. I've chosen a, a photo of a library. It's kind of a dream of mine to have a library, something like this, because I love to study. I love to read. And I love to write. But tonight is going to be a very different Emuna Trek because I want to have a Noahide to Noahide chat with my brothers and sisters out there. Fellow Noahides who have committed themselves to the God of Israel and his commandments that is for us, the non-Jewish people, known as the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noah. Now, I'm compelled to do this because of things that's going online in, on Facebook, and I'm, I'm kind of dating this, this video, but that's fine, because I've been following some things that's not even kosher for a non-Jew, and these things need to be addressed from a Noahide to a Noahide. Some of you who know me know that I studied for Orthodox Jewish conversion for almost seven years. So I do know a little bit on that side of the fence. I do not know everything, but I know, I know a little. And there, uh, there are other Noahides, mature Noahides, who know more than I do. And that's, that's fine. We're all growing where Hashem has planted us and where we're at. But this just needs to be said. I need to bring this out. That in some of these discussions, there's been Halel Hashem. And those who know what I'm talking about knows that this is a bad thing. This um, means that a black mark has been put on the name of our God and our Creator. By comments made from either side that is improper publicly, things should be done privately. That is the correct way it should be done. But I wanted to have a chat with my Noahide, like I said, my Noahide brothers and sisters. We are, I, I'm going to make this firm statement. We are commanded and given seven categorical guidelines, behavior guidelines, laws, rules, instructions, commandments, how, whatever, whatever uh, you feel that, fit, that fits the divine instructions, the mitzvot, as they are called in Hebrew which doesn't mean just a command. But that's not what this video is about. It's a, it is a divine commandment. It's a divine, a mitzvot is a divine commandment, a divine instruction. And we know that in the, uh, in the Torah, the book of Genesis, that these were given to Adam, six of them, passed down to Noah, six of them, after the flood, a seventh was given. But today, we do not receive them from Noah via oral tradition as Noah received it. We receive these now via Moshe. Hashem gave them to, to, to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, on Mount Sinai. And Moses gave them to Israel. We learn our commandments under the authority of Moses. And that brings up a lot of issues. There's a lot there. The mitzvot, the seven, the, the, the Sheva mitzvot, the seven commands, 
and their details. They're categorical. They're very deep. They are our primary, those of us that are non-Jewish. I'm not speaking to a Jew uh, tonight. I'm speaking to a fellow Noahide. We're chatting. These Sheva mitzvot is our duty before Hashem, before God, before the Creator. Nothing else is our primary duty. This is what we are obligated when we accept these before uh, God and we tell him this is what we're going to do. We have made an oath to God. And that is very important. We are obligated to these commandments. They are our primary duty. I don't know how else to say it any stronger. They are our righteous, our righteousness. They are the laws that we are judged by and have always been judged by. Examples, the flood, Nineveh, in the cities of Sodom, all judged by these seven. Well, the flood was six, and, and Nineveh and, and Sodom was seven uh, of these categorical commandments that is given unto man. And I'm not going to go into the, the details of in the locations of them. That is your job. That is your job to study and to know the commandments. You cannot just say, you know, commandment one, commandment two, commandment three, and count seven on your finger. Well, I, I know them and I observe them. No, that's not good enough. You need to study. You need to meditate. You need to pray about these seven commandments. These are your duties and nothing else is your duties. Nothing else will replace them. Nothing else will enhance them other than your observance your faithful adherence to the laws of God that is commanded upon you. There's a statement that says that he that is commanded and does is higher than he who is not commanded and does. And that is a statement from our sages, from the sages of Israel. And this needs to be firm. This needs to be first in our lives before anything else. Just like I said, counting them off one, two, you know, one through seven on your fingers and rattling them off in your head. And you that just because you can do that doesn't make you righteous. It doesn't make you walking with God. Your life, every bit of your life has to be wrapped up in these seven mitzvot. Everything you do, everything you say, every place you go your relationship with your fellow co-workers, with your neighbors beside you, the people you meet in the aisles in the grocery store revolve around these seven categorical mitzvot. Nothing else does. Now, that being said, there are, let me, let me explain it this way. All mankind is bound by these seven, even the Jews, even though they're even though they're expanded at Mount Sinai for the Jews because they're the priestly nation. They're the firstborn son, Ezekiel uh, four twenty-two. Not Ezekiel, Exodus. Sorry about that. I had Ezekiel on the mind, um, but Exodus four twenty-two. God told. Moses tell Pharaoh that Israel his, was his firstborn son. And those who are talking about their son in these conversations, and they're disparaging certain rabbis and certain um, groups of Jews and talking Hallel Hashem, evil against them, you're talking about the firstborn son of, of Hashem. You need to think what you're doing because you're not observing your mitzvot if, you, if you're, you know, saying evil things and bad things. And I've, I've read them and, I, and I've heard them with my own ears. No, no, we do not talk. I don't care if we don't like what the firstborn son is doing. We don't talk about them. 
That is a no-no for us. That is a no-no. And we, we, we better watch out in running our mouths against the firstborn son. I don't care if you don't like what they're doing, what they're saying. You don't have a right to talk about that. It's one of the reasons why idolaters cannot, uh, cannot study Torah because they will twist it and they will use it against Israel. They will speak evil against Israel. Those are reasons why idolaters cannot study and is not permitted to study the Torah because they haven't been trained how to do it. So we need to get it right. My fellow Noahides, we need to get this right. Quit talking about Israel and the firstborn son. Regardless if you don't like something they're saying or how they're saying it, or if one particular group of the, of, of the, the sons of, of, of God is, is uh, teaching this one part of it, and another teach, they're not wrong. Either one is not wrong, and it's a Torah aspect. They're not wrong. They're both right, and they can be. You have to know Torah to understand that. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little bit rough there, but when I read these, when I read these comments online of Noahides uh, disparaging and, and talking evil against certain certain ones or the children of, of God, the firstborn children of God. <clears throat> It just, it, it, I'll be honest with you, it just, it angers me. It angers me. It's best just to keep your mouth shut. It's best to keep your mouth shut. If you don't agree with what this rabbi is saying or that rabbi is saying, it's not our place to correct the rabbis. It's not our place to correct those in whom the Torah was given. We are the guest. In essence, we're the guest. We're coming to them to learn what it says. There are other religions that does that. And we're supposed to be coming out of those attitudes in those ways. Now, that being said, like I said, our primary duties before God are the seven. Now, there are elective mitzvot. There are commandments that are for, strictly for Israel only. We need to look at those commandments like we do a sign on a on a fence going, going around a protected area that says, do not touch high voltage. We don't touch those commandments. We don't touch them. We don't go nowhere near them. And how do you know which ones they are? Study with the rabbis. They will tell you which ones. Then there are commandments that we are, that I call the electives, the elective commandments that we are permitted to partake in in part, but not in whole. And these, these mitzvot can be anything from liturgical prayer, uh, Shabbat or Shabbos, um, some of the other holidays that Israel has. There, there, are, there are electives that we are permitted to partake in in part, not in whole. Now, that being said, we are not, permitted to look at these mitzvotes and decide how we will keep them, how we will do them, how far we will go and what we won't do. We have to be trained in these mitzvot. If you're not being trained in how to acknowledge and remember the Shabbat, then you have no business doing it. If you're not being trained in proper, in proper liturgical prayer, as, as, a, uh, as a mitzvot, which we are not commanded, by the way, any of the electives, if we do not even do them, it is not a sin for us. We, we have an obligation to pray. We do. We have an obligation, as, as I have learned in, in my studies from the rabbis, we have an obligation to pray for our needs. And that could be any time of day, seven days a week, you know, 24 hours a day at any time. The rabbis recommend that I've studied under, if, if you are able to set aside a specific time to get away and create a special time period and make that a habit at that time, it will make it more special for you. 
but we are not commanded to pray in liturgically through a prayer book. But there are some that do want to. But I'm telling you, if you have not been trained properly in these areas, you have no business doing them because that is not your righteousness. That is not what you're going to be judged upon when your, your soul returns back to its creator. Will you receive a reward? Our sages, our sages, because I say our sages, because I'm connected with Israel. The sages of Israel says that, that there is some reward. Some. We don't know how much, but it is nothing like the reward you're going to get if you will faithfully adhere to that which you are commanded first and foremost. We are not to neglect our primary duties. To be able to do and study and learn these electives. These are, these are what I'm saying. They are electives. You, if, you, if you're not grounded in the Sheva mitzvot, B'nai Noach, you really don't have any, any duty in these other mitzvot. You're letting down on your job. Now, as I said before, I want to bring the importance of these mitzvahs, all of these mitzvahs. I've been pondering this. Matter of fact, I didn't sleep last night because of some things I've read and I've seen, and I wanted to have this Noahide to Noahide chat. There's a story in the Torah. Now, when we study the rest of the Torah outside of our, our, our mitzvahs, there are lessons and principles that we can learn uh, for ourselves. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful lessons that we can take into our lives. And there's a lesson, and I had not really come to this as I really meditated on, on this. And, and see, real quick, there's a midrash. There's a teaching, an ancient teaching of Israel, that Psalms 1 is about Noah. And, and I've got a book here that, that teaches some on that. And it's really interesting. It's not saying that it is about Noah. It's a midrash. It's a teaching. It's, it's, you have to study, learn to study Torah properly and understand what midrash and, and, and these things are. There's different areas and how they bring about. It's more like a sermon or a lesson, an example, a parable, however you want to look, however it's best for you and your in your mind to be able to understand. But in this Midrash, Psalms 1 is about Noah. Because it says, praised is the man. It says in the Hebrew, the man. And it's talking about the man, not just any man. And so in this Midrash, it's saying the man is Noah. And he didn't walk in the ways of the sinners and sit in the seats of the, you know, the, the, the scorners and the scoffers and all of that. But one of the things it says is he meditated upon the Torah day and night. The Torah or the instruction he was given was the six mitzvot. The seventh one after the flood. But he meditated upon these day and night. And he learned aspects about what we know now as the written and the oral Torah is, is, as the Midrash teaches that he learned aspects of this stuff way before Sinai because of his constant meditation day and night on the Torah. We need to meditate. We need to, to, to stop all these extra elective mitzvahs sometimes. And, and instead of spending time studying about Shabbat and, and about prayers and meditate on theft, meditate on murder, pro, uh, personal um, property, personal injury uh, laws, and things like that, business laws, how to do proper business as a Noahide according to the laws of theft, the laws of murder, and the laws of property, protecting someone else's property. I mean, there's a lot there. There's a lifetime of study. Am I saying not to do these, not to do prayer, not to do Shabbat, not to do Hanukkah and kosher and all these? No. They have their place. They have their place for those who desire them and want to learn them. But do not give up 
your time and effort away from Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noah to do these. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you start studying and, and pondering these things, you know, the, the Sheva Mitzvah, you're going to find little time to get into these electives. But I'm not telling you not to do them. They're, they're good. They're there. Now, let me explain this in a way that has come to me in my meditation. This is my meditation on the mitzvot of our creator, be it for the Jew or for the non-Jew. As I was saying earlier, there's a story in the Torah that's really interesting. And most of you know it. And you've heard sermons preached on it in your, in your past religious life. And the story is about when the, when the Ark of the Covenant was being carried on a wagon. And I believe, it's been a while since I've, I've looked at the exact text. But I believe it was only being brought, I think, by David on the way back to, uh, to Jerusalem. And there was a stumbling. And the Ark of the Covenant rocked on the, the wagon. And it appeared that it was going to fall over. And one of the men, out of his zeal, out of his love for Hashem, reached up to steady, you know, his intent was good, proper. He wanted to steady the ark, and it cost him his life. He died because the Creator said, do not touch it. And he violated it. Regardless of his intentions, he violated it. And it ended in bad, bad results. Now, what can we learn from this? There was a mitzvah not to touch that. A divine instruction not to touch the Ark of the Covenant. Well, the divine instruction came with divine instructions on how to touch the Ark. It had to have poles made a certain way. And then, but not anybody could just grab those poles and go with it. It had to be a certain group of people that had to touch those poles and carry that ark. So the, instruct, the divine instruction came with divine instructions. And so does the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noach. The divine instructions of God comes with divine instructions for each one of those. And we are to study those things out. It's our responsibility. So that got me to thinking about this. The, 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 the Ark of the Covenant was, I'm going to say the word symbolic or metaphysic, however you want to use it in your mind. But it carried the divine presence of the Creator. Therefore, every, every mitzvah in and of itself is in kind of like an ark. Every mitzvah carries the divine presence. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? Every mitzvah carries the divine presence. When we observe the mitzvahs that we are commanded, and when the Jews observe the commandments that they are commanded to do, we, in that commandment, is permitted to... Com carry the divine presence that is attached to that mitzvah. Do you see how important it is for the B'nai Noach uh, or the, the Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noach? Every one of them carries the presence of Hashem and we are permitted in full, not in part, but in full, we are permitted to carry the divine presence that is attached to those commandments. And now you want to, some people want to say they're not enough. They're second rate. Are we going to call the divine presence second rate and not enough? Every mitzvah carries its own measure of the divine presence. 
And when we observe them for the sake of Hashem, that he commanded them through Moses, our teacher, we are getting the opportunity as non-Jews in our commandments to carry the divine presence, not only in our lives, but into this world. The world may not know what they're seeing, but what they're seeing is we are bearing the divine presence through these mitzvahs. That is how we can correct this world, clean this world up. This is why, this is why the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noak are primary in our lives as non-Jews. Now, like I said, I am not saying we cannot do and should not do these electives. They, they have their place. They have their place, and the, but the, the rabbis need to teach us because we are not permitted to carry those mitzvahs in their entirety. And we need to know what's off limits. We can't choose upon ourselves what is off limits, what we want to do and what we don't want to do. No, we don't have that choice. This is a very important. Yes. Liturgical prayer, Shabbat, um, some of, of, of the Yom Tovs we can do in part. And I don't like to say and do. We can acknowledge and we can do, I guess they say we can do, we can do the parts that, that we are told that we are permitted to do. And we will get a little reward for those. But again, by not doing them is not a sin. Now, when I was studying for conversion, my first uh, rabbi and teacher, Rabbi David Steinberg of Brooklyn, who was of the Satmar, who lived a very strict life. His, he was a very beautiful man. He taught me some of his personal, his personal ways he observed the Torah. That wasn't even commanded to him, but it was his commitment, his commitment to his creator and how he observed um, certain mitzvah and it's it's beautiful it's really beautiful but one of the things he taught me he sat me down and he told me he said and this is when i was studying for conversion this was this would be almost 10 years well no this would be Yeah, it's less than 10. It'd probably be about six or seven. It would be about, no more about like eight or nine years before, I, before Hashem showed me that my, my, my walk with him is, is through the Sheva Mitzvahs. Um, he shared with me, he says, now, when you convert, you're going to see Jews observing the commandments in different ways. Like there's twelve tribes, so there was, so there's there's variety, and and everybody is working to observe the, the the same exact commandments, but someone may do it a little different than others, but it doesn't make it wrong. It's it's their walk. It's how they do. And he said, "You're going to see. Uh, you're going to see. I'm just going to give you examples. You're going to see." Uh, Breslev, how they do it. You're going to see Chabad, how they do it. You're going to see the Satmar, how they do it. How the Ashkenaz, how they do it. How the Safar, do, how they do it. You're going to see all these different ways. He says, he, he gave me, he says, I'm going to give you a warning. Don't, don't play with fire. If you make a commitment to, to Hashem, to, to the Creator, this is how I'm going to observe a commandment. You know, I want to follow, say I wanted to be a Breslov, which I love the Breslov. Love studying Rabbi Nachman, studying for years. And, and let's say Ashkenaz and Breslov. I'm, I, it's it's fine-tuning down that walk a little bit in that. They wear certain kippahs. They, they have certain... Uh, things they do that in their observance of of what's called the payas, and it's just, it's just different things. Just 
He says, if you commit to Hashem, this is the walk that you're going to do. You cannot go back on that. Make sure before you commit to Hashem, that is what you're going to do. For whatever comes out of the mouth of a man, that he will do. And he's judged by it. Do you see what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? There are people out there that want to go out here and, and, and oh, i I got to observe the, the Shabbat. Da, 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 da. If you commit yourself to Hashem doing that, and you decide, well, after a while, it ain't what I want to do. No, no, we cannot play around with the mitzvot. They are not meant to be played with. Even the electives are not meant to be played with. So if we decide we want to, to do one or more of them, we need to properly learn what that mitzvot is, and we need to do it. We can't just play with it. I'm hoping I'm getting this sense of very serious sense across. Because this is not, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, this is not being said. And it needs to be said. As I've stated, every mitzvah in itself carries an aspect of the divine presence attached to that mitzvot. That's how serious this is. This is how very serious this is. This is why our mitzvot is primary in our lives. And we need to walk in them. And then when, once we have become grounded, then look over into these others if this is what your desire and, and, Hashem may put, and Hashem will put those desires there for you. But understand, some of these desires that Noahides are having is because a, a lot of them have come out of the religions of this world and it's left an empty spot. I call a void. And they want to fill it. They want to trade one religion for another. I did it. I did it. I thought I needed to convert. Once, once I came to the knowledge and the, and the understanding of the one true God of Israel, immediately I saw conversion. I'm talking about days later. Oh, I got to go do this. And I jumped into it because it's beautiful. Orthodox Judaism is beautiful. The, the, the stuff that God gave the Jews to give, it is, on, on, it, it is beautiful for what they're supposed to do. And then I learned that it's not, not my path. And so now I, see, now I see this stuff. But so many that are new or newer on the path are chasing after these electives because it fulfills a void because observing, you know, the prohibition of theft, the prohibition of murder, the prohibition of forbidden sexual activity doesn't feel like it's enough because they haven't grasped that every one of those is a part of the divine presence. And it's not become a part of them. And to, to understand when we start studying about theft, that it's more than just taking something that doesn't belong to you. It is also taking time from somebody else for no reason. Like one of the things I learned, learned when I was studying for conversion is if you if you go into a store and and without the intent that you're not going to buy nothing, and a, and a and a and a clerk comes up, can I help you? And you stand there for an hour, asking all kinds of questions about an, about something, you know, on the shelf, without the intention you never intended to buy, you just stole from that person and from that person's employer. You see what I'm saying? That that fits us as well. Theft is a very, a very, very, probably one of the deepest topics that we could, you could ever study, and you'll never come to the end of it. Murder. Well, I don't kill him. I'm not killing. I'm not shot nobody. I'm not, I'm not taking somebody's life. One, that's murder. That's theft that you can't return. It's a high level of theft. But murder includes embarrassing someone, 
ruining someone's name. Come on, guys. There's, there's people out there bad-mouthing rabbis and, and certain groups within Judaism. They're murdering. You're violating the prohibition of murder. Because we are not permitted to do that. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't just say, y'all, because you haven't took a gun and shot somebody, you haven't murdered. But you can sit online with your little fingers and you can type out, oh, I'm mad about this, about this rabbi or about this group, and you just violated. Think about it. This is how important it is for us to make the Sheva Mitzvahs primary to our lives before we do anything else. It is more important than the electives. Again, I'm not saying they're not to be done. Rabbi Heim Goldberg of the Norhide World Center is properly teaching those who will listen. He's properly teaching these things. And it can, they, they can bring beauty to a person's life in their proper observance, under guidance, not just choosing, I want to do this and, and deciding how you want to do it. No, not permitted to do that. If this is something that you want to do, make sure that the Sheva Mitzvah Spinoak is first in your life and then seek proper education on what you see as an elective, elective mitzvot that you want to, to bring into your life. Now, we're not permitted to add it as a mitzvah, but we are permitted to partake in these mitzvahs and get reward for them. But the reward is nothing like if you never do one, you never sin because they are not your righteous. A th you can observe a thousand Shabbat. You can never eat uh, shrimp again. And none of it will be anything toward your righteousness because that's not what your righteousness is judged on. Your righteousness is judged on the Sheva, Mrs. Benenoak and their details. I wish I could get that clear. And again, I'm saying again, I'm not speaking against the electives. They have their place, but they must be properly learned. And that's the problem. There are some out, there's a lot of, a lot of Noahides out here running around doing how they think it ought to be done instead of how it's supposed to be done. We non-Jews have a world to settle. And um, Rabbi Menachem, Menachem Schneerson, blessed memory, gave a good teaching on it. Genesis 8, 22. About as long as the earth, you know, you know exists, there's, there's cold, there's winter, there's um, seed time and harvest will not cease. Our job is about seed time and harvest. Everything, every work on this earth has a time of seed time and harvest, regardless if it's, if it's vegetables, doing your job, everything is it's seed time and harvest. And that's our duty. And our duty is to take these Sheva Mistress B'nai Noach into the world, into our world, into your world, where you work, where you live, where you go grocery shopping. If you go to the laundromat, if you go to the movies, whatever, wherever you go, you carry the divine presence with you in the observance of these commandments. That's how important it is. And it's never ending. Do not replace the Sheva Mitzvah for Nainok with electives. Do not. It won't benefit you one bit. You can keep a thousand Sabbaths. And you might do it exactly how you're told to do, but if you neglect the the uh, Sheva Mitzvah where they know it, that's profited you nothing because you've let down on your duties. Please, please hear what I'm trying to say. 
I'm trying, I'm trying to talk to my, my fellow Noahides here. Please, please hear, hear what I'm saying. For the sake of Hashem, make these seven commandments and their details primary in your life before you venture somewhere else. I'm not telling you not to venture. It is permitted to go. But go rightly. Go with, with proper training and guidance. Just like I, before I could convert, I had to be trained. I had to be trained and then that training had to be accepted before I was allowed to go to the mikvah and even standing in the mikvah, you are questioned. So learning Torah, you have to be guided. You have to learn. It's you, you just don't walk through the door and go, hello, I'm here. I'm home. No, it doesn't work that way. And just even in the Sheva Mitzvah, they know you need training. You need to learn. In the electives, you need to be trained. You need to learn. All of this, we have to be trained and learned and, and, and to learn before we, we, we go out and do them. We just can't pick them up and say, this is how we want to observe. We need to study. We need to ponder. Now, with the Sheva Mitzvah Spenei Noach, there are areas that the Jews are not going to understand completely because it's our side of the fence. Okay, I hope you understand that. There's things that we're going to delve into and we're going to learn in the details of ours that they may know, but they may not have the full understanding because it's not a part of their life. Just like, I'm just giving you an example. I can say I can say a blessing. I can say a bracha and thank Hashem for my pepperoni pizza. But you can't do that. He can't understand that because he's not permitted to eat, eat, eat pepperoni. He has a total different walk with with the Creator. Just like a a pine tree has different obligations before before its Creator as an oak tree does. A pine tree just can't just up and decide. I want to produce acorns or it can't look at a birch tree. Oh, I want, I want that beautiful white bark. It can't do that. It doesn't have free will. And that's what we're supposed to learn from. We're supposed to learn from the laws of creation. We were made last. The laws were already here. We can see them as an example that, that grass can't, can't look at a grapevine and decide it wants to produce grapes. No. And, and, and vice versa. We, ha we are our kind. We, we are the non-Jews. And we are of our own kind that, that, that um, Hashem has made. And, and Rabbi Hirsch says it's so beautiful. He says that it takes grass. It takes the, the cedar. It takes the oak, it takes the, the grapevine. It takes all of that in, in, in Hashem's world, world. He created them all, each with a different purpose and each with its own laws. And the same thing is with the non-Jew and the Jew. We are created with our own laws. We are both needed for the proper running of the kingdom of Hashem on the earth. That's how important it is for us to operate in our mitzvot before we go to electives. The electives is just that. They're electives. They don't have to be done, but if you choose, there's a way they need. There, if you choose to do the elective, there's a way to do them, and that's what needs to be done. And so I'm going to bring this chat to a close. I, I, I'm going to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for uh, listening uh, to this very different Amuna track. Um, maybe I can have some more chats, maybe not as <laughs> uh, fiery as this one, uh, but this has just been on my mind and I wanted to talk to my, my fellow Noah Hides. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You can contact me through um, my Amuna track. 
uh, conversations or message me. I'm on Facebook. You can message me. Uh, and I'll be glad to do my best to answer you according to how I have been, how I have learned and how I've been trained by, by my teachers in the ways of Torah that I'm responsible for. So I want to say good evening. I am in uh, East Tennessee, uh, Southeast Tennessee, matter of fact. And so it's the evening time on Saturday night, and I want to say good evening. Thank you for listening to this. Please hear my words, and please take to a very serious heart the commandments of God, all of them, the commanded and the non-commanded. Take them all to heart and understand what they are and that they, they carry the divine presence and what that means and how it means it's more important to do your duties than it is to do the electives. But there's room to do the electives. Just you've got to do it properly. And that's what I ask. Seek, seek proper education in, in all the mitzvahs of Israel.